Um, okay, so we've got someone here tonight who has done some really special things, and it's it's been a bit of a shame that they've not been kind of wider publicised. And it's amazing. We love giving him a platform. We did a, our last event um, just because he's. <coughs> He's out there living his life, um, and he's one of the people that you'll sort of see on the street, and he's got a regular full-time job, and then when he can, he just gets away and breaks world records and does solo endurance events and just comes back with these amazing stories and amazing experiences. So the next person up is Hugo Metcalf. I'll let him tell you about everything he's done. It's, it's really impressive. Um, so Hugo Metcalf. Hello. Uh, you'll have to forgive me, I'm not uh, off book yet. Uh, anyone who came to the last talk, uh, this is the perfect time to go to the loo, get a drink, because you're gonna, we're going to cover some old ground here. Um, anyway, so uh, I was trying to decide over the last week, because obviously the planning for these things are fantastic, so you get a lot of lead-in for getting ready to give a talk. So over the last week, I've been trying to decide what to talk about, um, and whether I should... Uh, do a wide-eyed sort of warble about my adventurous exploits, or more of a sort of an educational sermon on uh, exploring for beginners. So I've tried to land somewhere in the middle um, in order to maintain your attention for the maximum amount of time. Um, and I thought, I suppose the message really is, if you can't make exploring your living, like quite a lot of people here have, you can still, it can still be a part of your life. So perhaps I should start by introducing myself. My name is Hugo Metcalf. Uh, I currently manage uh, a community mental health unit in West London. Uh, it's a nine to five. Uh, for those that don't know what that is, it's a sort of a step down from hospital back into the community. Um, I'm passionate about what I do, um, but what it means is that I don't have much free time. And at the end of the day, I'm pretty knackered, so I don't have much free energy. But it hasn't ever got in the way of my other passion, which is exploring and uh, adventuring. First, I must stress, I see myself as an everyman explorer. Uh, I'm not fantastically fit. Um, I don't know how well I do at uh, your fitness thing. Yeah, probably awesome. I don't know how it's going to work out for me, but you know, I'll be fine. I'll be fine. Um, I never really played any sports as a kid. Um, I don't cycle. I don't rock climb in my spare time. Uh, I just come up with ideas for expeditions. Uh, and fun ways of computing, uh, completing them, and just go and do them. You really are limited only by your imagination. I got, I got a great piece of advice once, at a talk quite like this one. You don't have to be special to be an explorer. If you can walk, you can walk a thousand miles. If you can swim, you can swim a thousand miles. If you can ride a bicycle, you can cycle a thousand miles. These are all truths, you know, you're able to do these things. It's just having the willpower and the imagination to come up with them and do them. My first expedition was in 2008. Um, I stumbled through three years of university, uh, balancing casual al alcoholism and academic excellence, you know, I'm not supposed to know about that. Um, and I set out in June 2008, and in December 2008, I arrived on the east coast of China, six months and 4,000 4, miles later, uh, having been the youngest solo person to walk the length of the Great Wall of China. Uh, it was terrible, but amazing <laughs> at the same time. Um, here my passion was born. Uh, I vowed to continue exploring as long as I was able, and I've done my best uh, to stick to that since then. Uh, but I knew that as I reluctantly entered the world of work, the opportunity to take six months off and go on a wander um, was going to prove difficult. I feared that my adventuring days might be over, and I'd be instead left with camping in the Lake District and weekend city breaks to Brussels or Tossa del Mar. But, uh, but no, that wasn't the case. That wasn't the case. In August, la oh, yeah, in August last year, um, I returned from my most recent expedition, cycling a thousand miles from China to Pakistan across the Karakoram Highway, um, raising £2,000 for charity. And my girlfriend, long-suffering girlfriend, and I uh, returned exhausted, slimmer, uh, but sporting the title of being the first Western team to ever attempt that feat on a tandem bicycle. Uh, don't recommend it. Tandems are terrible. Um, don't take them up to 15,000 feet. Uh, the trip was amazing. It was exhausting, but amazing. We cycled across the highest international world in the world uh, and the highest border crossing. Snow-capped mountains, the world's largest non-polar glaciers, and altitudes of over 15,000 feet. We camped at the road site, uh, ate more noodles than I would wish on anyone. Um, and met some really amazing people along the way. All this, though, with only three weeks off work. 
It could have done it in two, but I kind of fancied the city break after all. <laughs> so when time is your energy, then time is your enemy, sorry, then pre-planning must become your ally. I chose the Karakoram not only because it was adventurous and somewhere I wanted to go, but it was manageable. You know, it was a quantifiable distance and a mode of transport that I could would let me traverse it fast. When I went to the Great Wall, I had no idea how long it would take me. I didn't even have a return flight. But, you know, in the world of work, that's not a luxury we have. But the Karakoram, and the expeditions that have preceded it over the last few years, the luxury of freedom from responsibility was gone. I had to get back to work. And this is perhaps the largest piece of wisdom I can try and impart this evening. If you want to go somewhere, that's great. If you have passion and the enthusiasm to see the world, push yourself and explore, fantastic. Now you need a plan. Find yourself a manageable journey. Most of us can take, we can't take much more than three weeks off anyway. So find something you can do in three weeks or less. Give yourself a cushion for those setbacks though. Don't give yourself exactly three weeks to do it because it's going to take longer. Something's going to happen. And if you make it before the end of the time, great. Then you get a little, uh, a little break after all at the end. Now for those city types among you, think of it as a bonus. Um, but yeah, row a river, cycle from one city to another, climb a mountain, build a raft and sail to France, take a skateboard and roll your way to Damascus, probably not now, but um, <laughs> the limit is only your imagination. Uh, I spend my lunch breaks now working out the distances from one place to another, the length of a river or a mountain range and how long it might take me to get across it. I'm sure some of the other speakers tonight can tell you, you know, a lot more about sponsorship and fundraising and how to put these things together. I was never very good at that. Uh, I tend to now just rope in other people to help me with that bit. But my part tonight is to sort of tell you that you can do it. Help you realise that this is something you can achieve and those ideas you have are not so mad. You can actually make those happen. Um, if you'll allow me, I wanted to give a little short reading from my as yet unpublished book. Should really start on that. Um, from my time on the Great Wall. It wasn't until later that I was told the temperature in northern Shanxi province had fallen as low as minus 30. All I knew at the time was that it was colder than I'd ever known, and I wanted to be somewhere else. But I reached the point where I began to fear sleep in case I didn't wake up. I just had to keep walking. One set of thermals, a pair of combat trousers, and a light wind jacket. I was ill-equipped for the conditions I now found myself in. Plus 14 degrees, the, the forecast had said. 0% chance of rain. 14 degrees would have felt tropical at this stage, and I would have welcomed even the most torrential of downpours. It began snowing on the first day and kept up all through the night. I rose from exhausted sleep the next morning to find the ends of my fingers and toes a disconcerting purple and devoid of feeling. The pain I experienced as my digits defrosted was, was like nothing I'd felt before. It was as if I'd willingly placed them in a furnace and was refusing to retrieve them. The resulting combination of pain, frustration and fear made me feel like weeping. I had little money, had no means of communication, and I was somewhere west of Pingguan, alone in the mountains of Shanxi province. I was climbing in the foothills of a seemingly endless mountain range, stumbling over rocks, willing each footfall as exhaustion began to set in. The handkerchief I'd wrapped around my mouth to protect my face was frozen solid. I had to keep wiping my eyes to brush away the icicles that were forming there. Walking was the only thing keeping me warm. When I had the energy, I would pitch my tent and huddle inside with the gas cooker on, knowing that each time I was wasting a little more fuel. More often than not, I was simply too exhausted and would crouch behind a rock face and get what rest I could before pulling myself up to carry on. I clambered to the top of a particularly high <coughs> ridge, uh, my oversized backpack making the ascent that much harder, and surveyed the landscape. I had hopes of spotting civilization, nothing, just more of the same as far as the horizon. I collected up some snow in an old peach jar. My fresh water supplies were almost depleted and began to stumble down the other side. My only direction was a compass bearing of roughly northeast. It was to be another two days walking before I reached my destination. I had to keep going. I was only halfway through with about 2,000 miles left to go and all this for charity and a mulish determination to succeed. Was it worth it? Was it worth dying for? Was it? Was it worth it? I tell you now, hand on heart, it most certainly was. Expeditions are as much about exploring yourself and your own mind as much as the destination. I advise you to choose something that matches your interests. 
there's a lot of cliches out there, you know, three peaks, this many peaks and this many amount of time, things like that. Find something that you're passionate about. Share that passion with other people. The hardest part is, is starting, is jumping off and doing something. Once you've done one thing, I promise you, you won't stop. Um, and uh, we're fortunate enough to be here with, with Blanchard and Nick and the Uganda Marathon. It's, it's a perfect, perfect starting point for those of you who haven't done something before. Get out there, do something, live your lives. Anyway, thank you very much. Thanks, Hugo. Um, yeah, I just want to kind of really echo something. So I've, I've known Hugo since we were both 16, and we both grew up just like, he would. He just looked like any other kid. Uh, we went to college, we went to uni, and, you know, we all thought, oh, we'll just all get jobs and grow up and be boring. And he just said, no, that's not me. I'll get a job, but that's not going to define me. Um, and it's really cool. So, next speaker is... Mr.